State police say more audio from Libby's cell phone was played for the victims' families. Including a mention of a man they noticed behind them. Police say the girls mostly talk about stuff girls talk about in the recording, but they also mention the man. The only audio that has been released to the public from the phone is that of a man's voice ordering Libby and best friend, Abby, down the hill and guys. Mostly girl talk? I don't feel like girl talk would have been what the girls chatted about unless they started recording sooner than we think, did she possibly start recording when she got onto the bridge and not after noticing BG? If they started recording the strange man approaching them. As teen girls, wouldn't you think their conversation would be talking about how they would get past the guy to go back or how they hoped he turned around and headed back before he got to the end, then they could go behind him. But to talk about makeup or softball in that moment seems a little strange. Unless they did not feel threatened by him. Did the girls pass BG on the trails heading towards the bridge or did he stay out of sight until he had them trapped on the bridge that towers almost 70 feet over Deer Creek, knowing they had nowhere to go once on the other side? Then he made his appearance. You do not see BG in the photo Libby took of Abby and posted on Snapchat. Some say BG scurried across the bridge but why would he, he was already in control at that point and ensure he wanted to make sure no other hikers were trailing behind him. Some say the audio video is 10 minutes some say 2 minutes what we do know is the public has seen a clip with two separate audio slices but the family has viewed the complete recording. Abby's mom said she believed the girls did not recognize the man. They also heard Abby ask Libby if the man was still behind them and Libby responded mhum. So back to when did the girls first encounter the man? When did the feel threatened by him? Libby having been on the bridge led the way and even stopped and took a few photos but Abby stayed focused on her steps being her first time on the rickety old bridge so I doubt she was confident enough to look back behind her while on the bridge. Yet she knew the strange man was there, possibly Libby saw and mentioned him. It seems it would have been after she took the picture of Libby since he was not behind her in the photo. I believe the girls finished the bridge and waited aside hoping the stranger would turn right around so they could go back behind him, sadly. That did not happen and as he approached them he ordered them down the hill. Some say he portrayed himself as a police officer to be able to gain control. I don't believe they thought he was a police officer even if he tried to say he was one. Have you noticed what the officers were there? I'm sure he had a weapon on him and believe he took control right away. He kept them close enough that Libby could not use her phone and call 911, you don't need service to call 911. Did she stash her phone, drop it, did he take it and clear it which is why La had to get in her iCloud? Was the SIM card still in it? Is the first sketch BG in the second a catfish image? I know the meeting someone has been debunked but according to Libby's friend from school, allegedly he said Libby told him she was meeting a 17 year old and he told her not to go. Every bit of evidence or every time his picture is posted it puts him in fear. He deserves to live in fear, in fear for the rest of his life, he deserves to be locked up and be in fear, as he will because prison will not be kind to him. Until he's caught share his picture share his voice. Keep him in fear just like he did to those innocent girls. He will be caught. If today's not the day then tomorrow but he will be caught.